Today, I want to introduce you to what the central theme of our book is, which is, of course, fuzzing. So this we go into the chapter on fuzzing, breaking things with random inputs. What does fuzzing mean? Fuzzing was invented by a guy named Bart Miller in 1988. This here is Bart. Here we go. Professor at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. So Bart, let me make this a bit bigger. Here we go. There we see him in all his glory. So Bart was working as a professor remotely in the year 1988 and was connected via a telephone line to his main computer. And um, there was a thunderstorm, and this thunderstorm uh, caused little electrical uh, disturbances in the telephone line, meaning that some of the transmission actually got garbled. And, it, and um, Bart remarked that this garbled uh, input to number of Unix programs, which he was using on the remote machine, actually caused these Unix programs to crash. So he noted these programs cannot work well with bad inputs. And um, what this meant was that he looked into, he made this a bit more systematic, and he made out of this a programming assignment to his students, asking them to systematically check out how robust Unix programs would be against um, bad inputs. And the result of this assignment, in which he coined the term fuzzing for fuzz input, that is input that is a bit blurry, that is not really clear what it's supposed to be, um, the result of this assignment was that about one third, one third of all Unix utilities at the time were actually vulnerable to such input and they immediately crashed. And this, of course, is something, well, if you repeated this today and you would be able to have a method that actually breaks uh, one third of all programs in the world, let alone Unix utilities, which also form the backbone of pretty much every single program that runs on the internet, you would be able to take down the entire internet in no time, except that there would be no way for you to brag about it because all the social services would be down just as well. So what is this magical thing that breaks so many things? Well, um, as we said, this is called fuzzing. And the way that um, Bart Miller and his students used fuzzing is actually amazingly simple. So the way that uh, Bart Miller and his students actually caused all these programs to crash was amazingly simple. They built the first fuzzer in the world, which is a program which produces fuzz input. And we're going to look into a super simple fuzzer that actually that does exactly this. So let me go into the chapter on fuzzing. So here we go, breaking things with random inputs. And uh, what we see here in the very beginning is a very simple fuzzer, and I'll walk you through the code such that you get a bit, a little bit more of understanding also how Python works. What we have here is a function called fuzzer, which takes a number of arguments. And these arguments actually have default values, meaning that if they are omitted in a call, uh, they simply take the values as specified after the equal sign. The next part here in this um, triple quotes is actually a comment that is doc comment as, as it's named, which describes what the function is doing. And what this uh, function is, is doing is it first computes a random number called string length, which it takes randomly from a range between zero and max length plus one. And max length by default is 100, so it's a, it's a random number between uh, zero and 100. And it takes, and we have an out string here, which acts as a buffer. And now we have a loop which um, goes, which is iterated string length time, namely the length of the string. And with every element of the loop, we add a new character whose ASCII number is uh, determined out of this range, which is a range between um, 32 
and 32 plus 32, 64, which is actually the range of ASCII letters in which we have all the punctuation signs. And all these values, character start and character range, can be added as well. And at the end, we return this randomly composed string. And here's an example of what this string looks like. So you see, we have plenty of numbers and random characters all put together in a single string. We can actually do this interactively. So for this, we go into a programmer's shell and we um, already have installed our fuzzing book here. So let me see whether everything works well. Pip install fuzzing book. This is how you do it. And it also installs all the remaining packages in here. There we go. Life is just great. Now you can invoke the Python interpreter and you can actually go um, you can actually go and import this very function with its definition from um, by writing from fuzzingbook.fuzzer, which is the name of the chapter that we have just looked at. Import fuzzer. So let's hope that this works. Wonderful. And you can now invoke this function right away and see that it happily produces one random input after another. Actually, fuzzer is very fa fuzzers like this is, are extremely fast. You can e easily produce uh, hundreds of thousands to millions of inputs per second. And these are the inputs exactly that go into a Unix program of your choice. So you can feed them into, say, uh, well, what are we going? What are we going to fuzz today? Let's take this input and let's feed it. So let me see, can I echo this whole thing? No, I cannot, too bad. Um, let me remove some of the small parts in here which are difficult to, oh no, let me just put this into double quotes. That's going to make my life a bit easier. Here we go, are there more double quotes in here? Mm. Yes, so this is actually being parsed. Oops. Okay, let's me get rid of this whole thing here. So there we go. Okay, now we can echo this thing, this wonderful string. And this now goes into a program of your choice. Well, how about sending this right away to the Python interpreter? Let's see what the Python interpreter makes of it. Python produces syntax error. So this is not crashing, which is a good thing. We can also invoke a Perl. We can also invoke a Perl interpreter and feed this into that. And of course, we can also send this say to um, foo.doc and then open foo.doc and invoke Microsoft Word on it, trying to um, trying to find out whether Microsoft Word possibly um, possibly crashes on this particular input. And the neat thing is you can do so hundreds of thousands of times, all automatically until you find a bug. Now, if you do this today, you're probably not going to find as many bugs as, uh, as Bart Miller's students at the time, simply because, well, all these tests already have been done before and developers are, well, smart enough, hopefully, to have done some fuzzing on their own already. But at the time when Bart Miller did all that, all of these programs would happily crash. And this is because of, of uh, this is because they would not, uh, they would not sufficiently um, check their inputs for validity. Notably, we would have buffer overflows, meaning that we have a short buffer and there's more characters being fed in into this buffer than we actually have space in memory. And this overwrites other memory locations, in particular in memory unsafe languages such as C. And by overwriting other parts of the memory, well, for one thing, you can um, very easily cause the program to crash because all of a sudden some variables get values which are not which are not supposed to have. But uh, even worse, so you can even um, if you're <clears throat> you, you can if you are smart enough, you can turn such a crash into a full fledged exploit, and then give individual variables uh, values that they should not have, and actually eventually. Um, also uh, cause the program to execute code of your own making, which is, of course, something that you'd like to avoid. 
And um, with this concept of fuzzing, uh, Bart Miller actually um, opened up the world for uh, security testers to detect plenty, hundreds of thousands of bugs and vulnerabilities in real-world programs. And so it's no surprise that simple fuzzing, such as Miller de developed it in the first place, now is commonplace for each and every single for each and every single program in the world. Remember that setting up such a simple fuzzer, as we have seen, takes phew, how many lines are we? One, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. So it's super easy to set up. And yes, you can just happily create such random inputs and feed them into a program of your choice. And uh, later on in the chapter, you will find ways to actually tune this to your liking. For instance, create only um, sequences of characters or other stuff. And we're also looking into how to fully automate, fully automate the whole thing. In particular, feeding these um, fuzz inputs into files and then uh, actually invoking individual files and trying out whether they work or whether they crash and whatsoever. So there are plenty of opportunities in here also to try things out for yourself. And for this again, you do have both the fuzzing book package, which you can try out, or you can, as usual, run things right within your browser by invoking the edit as notebook menu. So that's for my teaser of today. Enjoy the read and enjoy first experiments with fuzzing. Thank you.